I pay homage to the blessed one, supremely enlightened Buddha. Sadhu, sadhu. I pay homage to my teacher, Lukasavi Mahasi. Sadhu, sadhu. So we go to our main sutta. Let's see what the Buddha is teaching. So last time we discussed about uh, the teaching of the unawakened, the teaching of the awakened. See, so much knowledge we can gain, right? When we read suttas, when we study them, when we discuss them, so many different things, very interesting things about life, about the world, about the views, opinions, and that they are all important. Okay, now we are going to learn uh, from that sutta, Pasadika Sutta. We are here in the third uh, chapter here. When disciples have regrets, so Buddha is going to teach something very important here. Who is going to read? Can I try one thing? Mm -hmm. Awesome. When disciples have regrets, take the case where a teacher arises in the world who is perfected, a fully awakened Buddha. The teaching is well explained and well propounded, emancipating, leading to peace, proclaimed by someone who is fully awakened. But the disciples haven't inquired about the meaning of that good teaching. And the spiritual practice that's entirely full and pure has not been disclosed and revealed to them with all its collected sayings, with its demonstrable basis, well proclaimed wherever there are gods and humans. And then their teacher passes away. When such a teacher has passed away, the disciples are tormented by regrets. Why is that? They think our teacher was perfect, a fully awakened Buddha. His teaching was well explained, but we did not, but we didn't inquire about the meaning and the spiritual practice was not fully disclosed to us. And then our teacher passed away. When such a teacher has passed away, the disciples are tormented by regrets. Sadhu, we rejoice in your reading. So now you can understand here the, what the Buddha teaches. Um, yeah, so when uh, Buddha has appeared in the world and um, started teaching the Dhamma, but he did not teach uh, the entire path. Before he taught the entire path, he passed away. Um, so the path is not clear for the disciples, right? There are so many doubts and, uh, um, you know, the path is not fully disclosed to the disciples. And uh, there are not many, many devotees or humans or gods who know the Dhamma, who know the right path. And, and in that situation, the, the the disciples will be regretful, you know, remorseful, and they will be sad. Oh, our teacher passed away. The Buddha passed away. The, the Buddha didn't disclose the, the entire path to us. So how, how to follow this path now? We have so many doubts about this and that. And if that is the case, the disciples are tormented by regrets. Did that happen when the Gautama Buddha passed away? Did that happen? No, Bhante. no, Bhante. No, we are going to read about the what happened when the Gautama Buddha passed away. Here. Yeah. Who is going to read? I can read Bhante. 
que surian. When disciples have no regrets, take the case where a teacher arises in the world who is perfected, a fully awakened Buddha. The teaching is well explained and well propounded, emancipating, leading to peace, proclaimed by someone who is fully awakened. The disciples have inquired about the meaning of that good teaching and the spiritual practice that's entirely full and pure has been disclosed and revealed to them with all its collected sayings, with its demonstrable basis, well proclaimed wherever there are gods and humans. And then their teacher passes away. When such a teacher has passed away, the disciples are free of regrets. Why is that? They think our teachers our teacher was perfect, a fully awakened Buddha. His teaching was well explained. We inquire about the meaning and the spiritual practice was fully disclosed to us. And then our teacher passed away. When such a teacher has passed away, the disciples are free of regrets. Really. And uh, yeah, that's what happened when the Gautam Buddha passed away, right? If you remember the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the final days of the Buddha, um, <clears throat> when Ananda Bhante knew that Buddha was going to pass away soon, um, the thought came to Ananda Bhante's mind that uh, before talking to the uh, the community of monks, the Buddha is if the better that Buddha would not pass away. Uh, so before he talking to the community of monks, and then. One day, Ananda Bhante uh, went to the, see the Buddha and told that, Oh, Bhante, I had this thought. And then Buddha asked, What else do you expect from me, Ananda? I have taught you Dhamma fully. I have disclosed the entire path to you without holding anything back. I don't have special instructions to to reveal at the last moment. I haven't ho been holding anything back. I have already discussed fully. I have, this Dhamma path is very well spread now in uh, among gods and humans. You know, that's the amazing um, teacher, the, the, the blessed one uh, who, who taught the path out of compassion for the people and still we have the opportunity to follow that path. Even the Buddha is not with us. Remember the beginning of this sutta, the purpose of this, uh, the, the, the Buddha explaining all these things, the one of the religious teachers in the time of the Buddha passed away, Nigantranatha Buddha passed away, and uh, his um, disciples and uh, the monastics and lay people, they, they started fighting, you know, arguing each other, debating each other, because the path was not clear to them, right? After their teacher passed away, they had lots of disputes, doubts, you know, perplexities about the path and this and that. And that was the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the opening paragraph of the sutta and the background situation. And now Buddha explains, when a fully enlightened Buddha passed away, there are no regrets for the disciples. Disciples are free of regrets, you know, because those, um, the Arahant, Ananda, the Ananda Bhante and Arahant Chunda Bhante, they were like kind of sad that if this thing is going to happen after the Buddha passed away, it is not good, right? If the Buddha's disciples are going to debate like this, you know, Mm, it's not good. Buddha, Buddha explained, no, that it's not going to happen because the fully enlightened Buddha always passes away after disclosing the entire path, you know, to the disciples. There's no any uh, opportunity for the disciples to debate or argue or have any doubts about the path. So we are very fortunate, right? We don't have anything to add to this part. We don't, there is no, uh, no anything 
that we should remove from this path. You don't see anything like that. Because this path is already fully disclosed by the Buddha, fully clearly explained, well proclaimed by the Buddha. That is very important. If the path was not fully disclosed, then of course the future disciples will have to add things to this Dhamma. And they have to do some, you know, they have to edit. Some monks are doing that, unfortunately, also some lay people are doing that. That's not right. You have to edit this path if the path was not fully disclosed by the Blessed One. But Buddha explains here, the disciples are free of regrets. Beautiful. Okay, who is going to read next? And Buddha explains more about the, the spiritual path. I can read some. Fifth point on the incomplete spiritual path, etc. Now, suppose, Chunda, that a spiritual path possesses these factors, but the teacher is not senior, long standing, long gone for, forth, advanced in years and reach the final stage of life. They think that spiritual path is incomplete, but spiritual path possesses these factors, and the teacher is senior, then that spiritual path is complete in that respect. Now suppose that a spiritual path possess these factors and the teacher is senior, but there are no senior monk disciples who are competent, educated, assured, have attained century, who can rightly explain the true teaching and who can legitimately and completely refute and doctrine of others that come up and teach with a demonstrable basis, then the spiritual path is incomplete in that respect. But when a spiritual path possesses these those factors and the teacher is senior and there are competent senior monks, then that spiritual path is complete in that respect. Now suppose that a spiritual path possess, possesses these factors and the teacher is senior and there are competent senior monks, but there are no competent middle monks, junior monks, senior nuns, middle nuns, junior nuns, celibate white-tailed laymen, white clothed laymen enjoying sensual pleasures, celibate white clothed lay women, white clothed lay women enjoying sensual pleasures. There are white clothed lay women enjoying sensual pleasures, but the spiritual path is not successful and prosperous, ex extensive, popular, widespread, and well-proclaimed whenever there are gods and humans. The spiritual path is successful and prosperous, extensive, popular, widespread, and well-proclaimed whenever there are gods and humans, but it has not reached the peak of material position and fame, then that spiritual path is incomplete in that respect. 
Sadhu, Sadhu. We rejoice in your reading. Yes, here I think you can understand Buddha explains uh, there are so many requirements for uh, the spiritual path to, uh, to be complete, to last long, and Buddha is explaining all these factors. Uh, <clears throat> and Buddha explains, but when a spiritual path possesses those factors, and the teacher is senior, and there are competent senior monks, middle monks, junior monks, senior nuns, middle nuns, junior nuns, celibate laymen, laymen enjoying sensual pleasures, celibate laywomen, laywomen enjoying sensual pleasures, and the spiritual path is successful and prosperous, extensive, popular, widespread, and well proclaimed wherever there are gods and humans, and it has reached the peak of material positions and fame then that spiritual path is complete in that respect. Buddha explains, um, those are the requirements for a spiritual path to be complete. What do you think is the spiritual path led by the Buddha, complete or incomplete? Complete. It is complete, Bhante. It is complete with all these uh, aspects, with all these aspects. And that's why Buddha explains, I, Chunda, am a teacher who has arisen in this world today, perfected and fully awakened. Okay, the first requirement, the first aspect for a spiritual path to be complete is that it should be revealed or disclosed by a fully awakened Buddha. Okay, so our spiritual path has that aspect and it is based on uh, the discovery of a fully enlightened Buddha. So we are very fortunate. The teaching is well explained and well propounded, emancipating, leading to peace, proclaimed by someone who is fully awakened. That's the teaching, the Dhamma. We are learning, we are trying to practice. My disciples have inquired about the meaning of that good teaching and spiritual practice that is entirely full and pure has been disclosed and revealed to them with all its collected sayings, with its demonstrable basis, well proclaimed wherever, wherever there are gods and humans. So the Dhamma is very well proclaimed by the Buddha and that's this, another aspect requirement for a spiritual path to be complete which we have, uh, which is available today for us. So that is very important. I am a teacher today who is senior, long-standing, long gone forth, advanced in years and have reached the final stage of life. That is also very important because the uh, Buddha encourages his disciples to examine about his life. This teacher, the master Gautama, is he... Um, possessing these noble qualities for a short period of time or for a long period of time. Buddha encourages his disciples to investigate about his life. That is amazing. It's amazing. And Buddha, and then Buddha teaches, when they inspect and when they examine about my life, about my practice, they will realize that, oh, this is not for a short period of time, for a long, long time, the blessed one um, is possessing these good qualities, these noble qualities, and his his life is based on these wholesome qualities for a long, long time. So that is also important, and also Buddha teaches <clears throat> that for this entire forty-five years, imagine that it's not for a very short one year or two year or whatever, forty-five years, whatever has been taught explained, proclaimed by the Buddha, it, that is how it is going to happen. It's not going to happen otherwise. So imagine that statement made by the Buddha. Like, can we say, okay, for this entire day, like take today, whatever I have spoken, I have told, it's going to be that exact same way it's not going to be otherwise can we say that even for a day in our life no because what we say today we change tomorrow 
and we say, oh, I made a mistake. So I, I shouldn't have told that, you know, that's, that's not the correct way to say that, you know, and we change, we change every time. But think about the Blessed One's teaching about the life, about the statements the Buddha made for 45 years. Whatever have been taught, disclosed, proclaimed by me, it's going to be exactly like that, not, not otherwise. So Buddha encourages us to investigate that. So that is also a requirement for a spiritual path to be, to be complete. The teachers should um, spend many, many years senior. I have today disciples who are competent, senior monks, middle monks, junior monks, senior monks, nuns, middle nuns, junior nuns. You know, the, they are the ones who are going to um, propagate these teachings in the future for the future generations, so, which is also important. Otherwise, the, the whole thing will be uprooted. You know, it will, uh, it will not be supported, very well supported for the future generation, and it, it will disappear quickly. The teaching will disappear. But because they are a competent, well-learned, and uh, skilled disciples of the Buddha, monks, nuns, lay people, um, male lay followers, female lay followers, that is very good. It's, it's a powerful factor for the Dhamma to last long, long time. Today, my spiritual path is su uh, successful and prosperous, extensive, popular, widespread, and well-proclaimed wherever there are gods and humans. So that is very powerful. Of all the teachers in the world today, Chunda, I don't see even a single one who has reached the peak of material positions and fame like me. It is also a, a supporting factor for the Dhamma to last long, you know. If, uh, if it is not famous, so nobody is interested in that, right? And there are no support the, for requisites for the monks and nuns. They cannot survive. So there should be devotees who support the monks, who provide the monks with food, lodging, ro robes, medicine, and all these things. Buddha explains that is also a requirement for a spiritual path to last long with this mutual support of monks and lay people. Of all the spiritual communities and groups in the world today, Chunda, I don't see even a single one who has reached the pinnacle of material positions and fame like the mendicant Sangha. And if there is any spiritual path, which it may be rightly said that it's endowed with all good qualities, complete in all good qualities, neither too little nor too much, well explained, whole, full, and well profounded. It is of this spiritual path that this should be said. Sorry. Sorry. Think about that. Think about the path we have come across. Right? Very, very lucky. Okay, so any questions you like to ask? Anybody has any questions? You know, different suttas have different stories, right? Sometimes we learn about five aggregates of clinging, sometimes dependent origination you know, deep Dhamma, and, but they're all important because they, they generate so much faith and confidence in the path and which definitely helps. Buddha wouldn't teach anything that is not essential for the devotees to know. So, you know, everything has, you know, benefits. Each and every word uttered by the Buddha has, has big effect on the path. Gita, you have a question. Yes, Bhante. First to say thank you for sharing this sutta with all of us and thank you for the Dhamma wisdom. Bhante, I have a question. If the Buddha was able to live, um, if Ananda Bhante had, um, you know, heard and said, yes, Bhante, you know, begged him to live longer. How, how what is their lifespan? Like uh, Gautama Buddha's lifespan, was it one eon or like? Yeah, no, that's called the, uh, the eon of lifespan is a different 
meaning oh, from the normal than measuring. the 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 normal ion the okay. iu cup uh, or the ion lifespan means and uh, the 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 uh, what do you call um, the general uh, speaking lifespan like of 100 years at that time uh, that's the 120 years oh, so okay. the passed away at the age of 80 80 if, yeah if anand bante was able to invite before the buddha uh, abandoned the, the ability to the extend life his life yeah. force uh, uh, which is ayu sankara buddha would have lived uh, 120 years hmm. unfortunately that didn't happen yeah but then i'm wondering the buddhas before that had a longer lifespan like eighty thousand yons and i know there's no suttas um kind of confirming that those buddhas lived a full lifespan so or do all buddhas like ask their um disciples like give give the opportunity yeah, yeah. so so many <clears throat> factors in the life of the buddhas are like common to all the buddhas mm -hmm. uh, yeah but only some of them you know for mm -hmm. example uh, inviting the buddha to preach the dhamma which is mm -hmm. done by a, by the great brahma mm -hmm. uh, and um, th there are so many other factors like that common to yeah. all the buddhas like all the buddhas will have like uh, those nine qualities, itipiso, bhagavara, samma, like that. So there are uh, so many qualities like that. And also the all the Buddhas to be in the final life uh, as a human uh, baby, you know, would be born uh, uh, come to this world. Uh, and as soon as they are born, they would step, take mm -hmm. few steps on the ground and like that. There are some factors common to the lives of all the buddhas but uh, we don't have that much information about the yeah. lifespan of all the buddhas yeah yeah and also when he had that meal right that kiribat you mm. know uh, before the night of mm. the awakening and he mm. uh, puts the bowl in the river and says if it goes against the stream then i'm going to awaken mm -hmm. so um, that i believe also was what the other buddhas have also done in the past right possible. Um, yeah, possible. yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Good. Thank you. Yeah. If you read Acharya Manos, uh, what is that? Yes, uh, I have the book. <laughs> yeah, so yes. that's that's a powerful uh, book about so many information yeah. about life of the Buddha. And also um, Acharya Bhuta Sutta, if you read that, you will see so many uh, factors that are common to all the Buddha's lives. Because Buddha is specifically mentioned um this is common to all the buddhas mm -hmm. yeah because they practice the paramis for so long it's extraordinary perfection yeah it's incredible thank you Good. Good. <clears throat> anybody have any questions Anything related to what we were discussing or learning or anything not related to that or anything you would like to know, you can ask. And those verses of Arahans are also very powerful, right? Okay. Uh, Harry? Uh, yeah, uh, just a reflection. Just thinking that the Buddha's spiritual path uh, and build up is very successful. Um, it's just like a company where in um, you know there is a very successful organizational build up okay mm -hmm. so so it's hierarchy it's organization and buddha is a very successful succession planning something mm -hmm. like that so i'm just thinking okay so just making mm -hmm. comparison <laughs> with uh, what we see in the company <laughs> operation it's not a company you know it's we are <laughs> I know not it's making any profit than that. <laughs> <laughs> this end. And they also, everything free of charge you know <laughs> everything free of charge yeah so so it depends all the programs are free of charge okay <laughs> and it shows buddha is if very there, if there are new people yeah. here they will misunderstand <laughs> when, you say, when you say it is a company <laughs> no 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 i'm just making myself a comparison 
of course we had to Thank register you, this uh, monastery as a you know charitable organization which is uh, you know is a requirement by the government but every program is free of charge so invite your friends learn the dhamma practice the path and monks bantes are so happy to share the teachings with the with the people and bantes know how much benefit they are going to gain by listening to at least you know one verse of dhamma it's it's so powerful immeasurable peace is attained by people who listen to these teachings Very good. And you did the powerful meditation today. Navasiva Tikabana. Nine cemetery contemplation. Lots of our enlightened monks did that before they attain enlightenment. A powerful meditation. And leads to like leads to samadhi very quickly. And it it destroys defilements and uh destroys um, what do you call fetters very fast a powerful meditation you like the meditation you know everybody should like the truth is the truth we should we should really enjoy listening to truth reflecting on the truth contemplating the truth if we have been journeying in this long journey of sansara, it's not because we enjoy the truth, because we enjoy the, um, all the um, delusions and illusions in the world. We were chasing after those illusions. That's why we are still in this sansara, you know, experiencing old age, sickness, death, and all these problems, mental and physical suffering. It's because uh, we... We want we wanted to live in an illusional world. But truth has a different taste. When the wisdom grows little by little, the wisdom becomes very sensitive to the truth, and the truth becomes the sweetest taste for the wise person. Satchang Have Sadhu Tarang Rasana. Truth is the sweetest taste in the world. Sadhu. Sadhu.